Fulton meeting to order. Um, welcome to today's the closest you need to Nevada Authority. Uh, once again, can we ensure that all phones are switched to silent, please, and can I remind members and presenters when they use the microphones, can you please get as close as you can so that people in your gallery can hear what we're talking about. Um, On to the agenda. Item 1 is apologies for an absence. We've received apologies from Councillor O'Neill, Councillor Groncourt, Councillor Ward, Councillor Law, Robertson Collins and Lynn Collins. <coughs> Any further apologies? No? Item 2 is declarations of interest. Have a date. Yeah, thanks Steve. Can I uh, declare a uh, personal interest in items 7 and 9? I'm a director of the Chrysalis Fund and, uh, and that fund is referred to in in those two items. I'm, I've, I've already registered that in the register, but just for the avoidance of doubt, I'll declare it. Uh, Thank you. Absolutely. Um, okay, then, any further declarations? No, item three is the minutes of the previous meeting, which was uh, on the 1st of February 2019. Uh, can those minutes be agreed, please? Um, you probably can tell by this fantastic cake that I made, um, I think that didn't have to be on. Um, not, not very good, but you can see that it's International Women's Day and it gives us a great opportunity to celebrate the contribution that women make in our society, reflect on the progress that's been made in the battle for equality and pledge to bring about meaningful change. And what we're doing is a combined authority to take steps where we can to improve the gender quality issues. So over the past year we have appointed deputy portfolio holders uh, to ensure that women's voices have a say in the decision making process of the combined authority. We've funded schools programmes to help get young girls into tech and support a digital training for women and through our fair employment charter we're fighting in way poverty and insecure working conditions which disproportionately as we know affect women. But we want them we all agree as the leaders of uh, the combined authority to go much, much further. Last night, for instance, we convened the first Liverpool City Region Women in Politics stakeholder group, and that was led by my deputy portfolio holder, Councillor Carl, Carl Thomas. Uh, this meeting brought together women councillors and leading activists from all over the, the main political spectrum. Uh, these experienced women will work together to promote female political leadership and inspire the next generation of female leaders. And I'd like to thank Edge Hill University, the Institute of Public Policy Research, Blackburn House of course as always and the TUC for their support to help us identify the barriers women face in progress, uh, progressing to those positions of leadership and develop a range of actions to address them. We've also formed a new partnership with our LEP, and Asif is going to talk briefly to that in a few moments, but that's to improve women's representation across the city region of businesses. And the scheme will provide young women with mentors and role models from the world of business with the ultimate aim of increasing women's presence in the boardroom. And finally, I'd like to draw members uh, and CA staff's attention to the International Women's Day related activities and displays that our Unison branch have organised for us in the mezzanine just outside and I'd encourage everybody to try and drop in um, before 2 o'clock if our meeting concludes of course to show their support. This week the Combined Authority marked National Apprenticeship Week with the launch of Be More, our new apprenticeship portal which will make finding and taking up apprenticeships much easier for those living in the Liverpool City region. And as you know, improving the quality and scope of our apprenticeship provision is close to my heart and a note to uh, Ian Mayer who heads up as the portfolio leader of um, the skills agenda. And I'm delighted that we're taking yet another step to achieve parity of esteem between the academic and technical routes into employment. The R portal is the fiercest can in the country and it's a fulfilment of key manifesto pledges that are made and yet another example of how the Liverpool City Region is leading the way when it comes to improving the apprenticeship offer. It shows you that when you give somebody devolution, they can do things for themselves. Just imagine if we had to wait for central government to decide what we needed in our area and it's uh, down to the leaders and the leadership that they've shown that we're able to do this. 
Holmes England um, was uh, being re relocated uh, or co-located um, within our, this building um, and it's the first arrangement of its kind in the country and they came to the Liverpool City region last uh, week and uh, they announced £10 million worth of investment um, with Mayor Anderson for the Festival Gardens in Liverpool and we hope that they, being physically based here, will facilitate even closer working relations and uh, opportunities for further projects to get over the line and across the city region. Earlier this month, again with uh, Mayor Anderson, I attended a summit of leaders um, when we had face-to-face -face talks with two government ministers, well, two government secretaries of state, actually, uh, with plans to tackle the national air pollution crisis and what we need to do more locally, and we call for the introduction of vehicle upgrades or a scrap it system, and uh, we're waiting for the government to get back to us as normal. But this is a, a massive issue for us in the country, and certainly for us as a city and region. Toxic air leads to about 40,000 premature deaths every year, and it increases the risk of asthma, cancer, dementia, respiratory illness, and much, much more, especially in deprived areas um, of our city region. And Liam Robinson um, is chairing the city region wide task force to pull together and coordinate activity. And I think that for us as leaders, we recognise that we will have to take a much more um, robust position and some action on this in the months and the years ahead. And just finally, if I can uh, take it on two items of delivery. Last Friday I attended the opening of St. Winifred's Health, Social Care and Nursing Campus at Hebrew College following four million pounds worth of investment from the Command Authority. An absolutely fantastic project. Um, I'd advise people if you get the opportunity to go up and see it where um, training happens but that training then is uh, put to use in if you like the real world where people with mental health illnesses go to a centre as part of the, the £4 million investment and those people um, who are being trained get real life experience of working with patients and uh, people who uh, have those um, health and wellbeing issues, it's, it's brilliant. And on February 2nd, uh, 22nd, I was delighted to join uh, Councillor Derek Long to formally open the fantastic new and improved facilities at Newton the Willows. We had a huge gathering of, of uh, the great and the good, um, Derek, and that's after £19 million, and not um, and £19 million pounds of investment from the command authority. Uh, both projects, in my opinion, are examples of devolution of why the people uh, in front of me took the very brave decision of getting a devolution deal from uh, the Tory government. But well, it's response to local needs, it invests in our communities and it gives great opportunities to local people. Um, now, I did say to see if that you could get a few minutes, if you could just say a few words regarding the way of the LEP uh, is supporting women into business. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, as Steve was saying, the LEP takes the gender equality issue seriously. And this week we run a social media campaign um, highlighting and celebrating women's success in leadership roles across business in city region and from that we've had some fantastic response about both from comments about the campaign and also how we can build on this going forward so over the next oncoming months of the next year we plan to develop a mentoring program uh, working with businesses to address the gender gap and gender imbalance particularly in the border across the city region so we will start to develop that the LEP is also committed to becoming more diverse and to that end we'll be appointed a Equality and Diversity Champion in our next board meeting on March 21st, which is my birthday as well. Just for naughty, please. Thank you for coming for that. Um, but we've also launched a recruitment campaign for three new private sector board members to join us, which, all, which we would encourage women to apply for for the new led board positions. Thank you very much. Thanks, to Steve. Um, as it's International Women's Day, my wife's birthday is on the 21st, and that trumps yours. So. <laughs> Item 5 is the external. 
Um, the report set up the findings of the external audit plan for 2018-19 undertaken by the appointed external auditors, Madars. Um, Gareth Hitchmo is going to take us through that report. Um, Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, I'll take the report generally as read, and I uh, will just highlight what the probably the same features. Um, this is our first year of appointment members, so we've taken over the audit from the incumbents, which is KPMG, and just so members understand we were appointed as part of the PSAA Network Accept Audit Appointments uh, process. In terms of the report, again, I'll, I'll take it as read, probably in terms of key things for members just to be aware of. Page 16 just sets out the various responsibilities that we have as your auditors. There's no real change in those responsibilities from what we've had all from what the, the authority has itself. Ultimately, we have an audit opinion on the financial statements. We have responsibility to, to contribute to the report and to the whole government accounts. And we have responsibility to give an opinion on the value funding procedures that the authority has in place. In addition to that, we have responsibility to respond to any uh, comments or queries from the letters that fall within the scope of our appointment. So they're broadly our responsibilities. I'm Gareth Hitchrow, so I'm your appointed audit partner and I'll be responsible for signing off the audited accounts. Um, we were actually appointed in September. We've already carried out a large amount of um, planning work and, and, and work to prepare for the audit. There's been a slight delay in terms of timing of this report due to various chorus, chorus issues on, on different, different committees. So I will present it quite quickly. In terms of page 19, that's probably the next one that I'll go to. So page 19 just pulls out some of the key areas where there are experts involved in terms of where your management team are either relying on experts or where we are. There's really two areas. One is your defined benefit liability, um, where both you and us rely on an expert, and also there's evaluation of your property, plant and equipment. The report needs updating because your, your values are actually district values, so you have, you have got values appointed. We probably won't be using a third party to uh, audit work in the district value unless we believe there are elements in there uh, which we're comfortable with. The only other areas we need to flag to you if there's any areas in your financial statements that you rely on a service organisation, and the only one of those is um, your payroll service. So again, we have procedures that we do over that. In terms of probably jumping to page 21, um, we take a, a substantive approach to the audit. We're also appointed as the auditors of Mercy Travel. So obviously there's, there's consolidated group accounts. Um, we audit with respect to, to risks and items that we believe are significant risks. And there are four significant risks that we believe are areas of focus for us for the combined authority. Two of those risks are risks that we have on all of our audits, so are not authority specific risks. So they're the first two risks in the year 22, management override of controls and, and revenue recognition. The other two risks that are specific to the authority and, and are probably specific on most of our local government clients. So again, that comes back to those two matters that I've referred to that you have experts on. So the property plants and equipment on page 23 and you define benefit pension liability on page 24. So again, they're not the only areas that we look at, but they're the areas that we believe are the biggest risk of the material misstatements. I mentioned earlier on page 25, we have an additional responsibility to it in relation to your value for money arrangements, and it's a separate audit opinion. All this is flying is that in the previous year, KPMG have qualified that value for money opinion on an except for basis, and that was in connection with, again, as I mentioned, the policy of some of the audit and governance committees and committees around the authority. So again, that, that's for part of a, a significant risk in that matter, but other than that, we've got no other concerns over the value for money. Page 26 is the fees, which are uh, effectively allocated by the PSAA, so that was part of a larger tendering arrangement, and uh, they're uh, effectively put in independently. And the remainder of the report, section 7 on page 27, is just confirming our independence, and we, are, we don't care about any of the services for the combined authority or, or mercy travel, and we've scrutinised our, our staff in terms of any potential conflicts. And finally, probably section 8 is just explaining to members the concept of materiality, and the materiality that we apply to our audit. So our materiality is based on percentage of your gross revenue expenditure, and those materiality levels are similar to what we've seen from reviewing KPMG uh, KPMG's files in previous years, so hopefully it's, it's not flagging any untoward areas. And then in terms of rendering, rendering reports as appendices, um, I was asked to be brief, so hopefully that's brief enough, but I'm more than happy to take any questions that members have got. 
Any questions to Gareth? Just a, a small one, more, more a question, a, a point on this point of explanation with the reference to value for money, which obviously we are very keen to focus on in terms of the uh, combined authority. Uh, the reference to the quality issues in the um, uh, in the presentation there are actually quality issues which are derived from the government itself establishing uh, unfeasibly high levels of quorum for each uh, of these subcommittees. And I'm struggling whether it's two thirds or three quarters of power. To that, so it's a, a completely un unfeasible level of quality uh, uh, um, for for committees, which has been a challenge for a number of uh, combined authorities. It's like that and it's a structural fault within the government's approach, rather than a fault within the situation per se. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Any further questions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll agree the recommendations are set out on page nine, please. Item 6 is the report uh, that seeks approval of the appointment of Councillor Kate Brookcott as St Helens Council's nominated substitute to the combined authority. Um, are there any questions? Is that agreed then? The recommendation is set out on page 33. Item 7 is the City of Beijing Strategic Investment Fund um, in regard to Mersey and Reach and the next report seeks the approval to rescind the decision made by the Combined Authority on the 4th of July 2017 in relation to Mersey Reach SIF's application and agree a new fund stream for the Mersey Reach application. Appendices 2 to 4 are exempt due to the information relating to the financial or business affairs person. Therefore, we wish to discuss, discuss the content of the appendices. Jill will get us through what we need to do, but if we don't, then Mark can take us through the report. Okay, Mark? Thank you, Chair. The report concerns the Mersey Reach development on Dudley's Bridge Road in Sefton, which is for a combination of light industrial units, uh, a petrol filling station, and a drive through coffee uh, establishment. The project is actually unchanged from the original approval of a one million pound grant. The change is in the instrument that the CA proposes to provide to finance its development. So instead of a £1 million pound grant, we're offering a £4.5 million pound loan. There are two advantages here. The first is that we get our money back with a return, and the second is that the money we free up for the capital may be used in follow-on projects in the city region. Okay, um, any questions? Can we therefore agree the recommendations? That's out on page 35 of the report, please. Um, item 8 is, uh, again, it's SIF. Uh, it's. Um, so, sorry, could I declare an interest in this item? I apologise. I've only just noticed the time. Um, on the governing body of Kingsley Community School, and I chair Granby Children's Centre. Okay. No problem. Uh, that. So the combined authority agreed to sit in the package for the Everton Learning Skills Centre project. It's been on the 18th of August 2017, but since then the approval uh, granted for the project at the Everton site can no longer proceed and the applicant has requested that the allocation be used to support a similar project at a new site, the Granby Adult Learning Centre and Granby Children's Centre. So Mark, if you just briefly want to talk through that. Thank you, Chair. This change comes because the operational complexities are for the Everton's Children's Centre were seen to be too high after approval of the project, and um, the applicant then sought to see uh, sort of an alternative location. Um, the CA's view is that in this alternative location, which is the Grampy Children's Centre, uh, the, the need for the project, the outputs achievable, and the financial cost of the CA are equivalent. So the financial cost is the same, and it's on the basis we recommend it to you. Any questions? Um, can we therefore review the recommendations set out on page 63 in the report? Just because that, that's associated with, with skills, um, yesterday I went to St George's Hall twice, and it was for an apprenticeship celebration. It was absolutely amazing. It was very similar to when you graduate at the university, except there was no hat and gowns. But it was the exact same sort of thing. It's exactly what we should be doing about skills in our city region. Um, in fact, uh, Bob Spicer has given me a card off uh, three of the apprentices who said, 
Uh, thanks for yesterday. I really enjoyed it. It was great to celebrate apprenticeships. It absolutely is great to celebrate apprenticeships. Hopefully, with this fund, we'll see even more people celebrate apprenticeships. Item nine is uh, the establishment of a new city region urban development fund. And I think members will recall that in March 2018, the combined authority approved the establishment of an urban development fund. This report simply provides an update on the progress of the implementation of the fund and also seeks approval of an application to the Ministry for Housing Communities and Local Government for ESIF funding of £25 million. Pounds. And again, uh, Mark, I think you'll take it through. Thank you, Chair. Indeed, this invites you to approve a £25 million pound grant funding agreement which will allow us to establish a second urban development fund this time focused on premises for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, research and development, and low carbon investment. I think the portfolio will be applied to that. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Davis. <coughs> well, I just want to, um, to welcome this report, and um, I think this, this funding is, will be uh, invaluable in terms of the, uh, the areas that Mark has outlined, SMEs, R and D and low cost. I think um, uh, the main, my main uh, point is obviously apart from welcoming it, but to say that we'll need to make sure this is widely communicated and um, you know that we do uh, everything possible through Mark's team to invite um, good good projects to, to make sure that we uh, make maximum use of this this funding. But I think it's it's, it's really good news for the uh, for the CA and the local. And I think links into our pre-development funding that we've already allocated so that can be used hopefully to get some of those schemes that you're desperate to see we all are um, through the process of sausage machine and the combined authority. Um, so can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 67 and 68 in the report please? Really? Item 10 is uh, A, B and it, the report seeks the approval of an assurance framework for the adult education budget which is to be devolved to the city region from the 1st of August, uh, that long last, 2019. And Councillor May is going to take us through that report. Thanks, Chair. I think I just echo your comments there about long last. It's been, it's been a long time coming. Delays from government. Anyway, it's coming. It's coming in August. We're prepared for it. We are working towards. How, and what this report tells us is, is how we how we manage, how we how we govern, how we our commissioning processes, how we monitor all of that, how we monitor our approach to evaluation and monitoring in itself. And the framework um, meets the requirement of the adult education budget readiness conditions, combined authorities, and I'm reading this out because that's a long sentence there. Um, and, and, and it fits in with that. So we are we are required to do it. We, we should do it because we need to know what we're doing. And this gives us the framework for ourselves and and <coughs> providers to understand the processes, etc. And the, I'll finish on this comment, but the, we'll be bringing a paper to the next CA on the outcome of the commissioning process. So we'll see where we're going in much more detail then. Any questions for Councillor Mayor? If not, can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 71 of the report? Okay. Item 11 is the allocation of funding to support the Q network. Our final, uh, uh, sorry, it concerns £3 million of funding allocation for 2019-20 to support the maintenance of the Q network across the city region. Councillor Ian Robinson will take us through this report. Thanks very much. Obviously, as you just um, mentioned, Steve, it is uh, regarding that £3 million of funding allocation for 2019-20 uh, financial year. And effectively, what is proposed is managing that um, funding in a similar way to how we managed it in the current financial year 2018-2019, which, uh, for the avoidance of doubt, is proposing to allocate the money 25% of the fund by need uh, on the network with the remaining 75% by key group network length within each of the six uh, constituent local authorities. So that's a simple and straightforward. Thank you. Um, any questions? 
can we agree the recommendations are set out on page 107 of the report, please? Item 12 is public question time, Trudy. We haven't received any change. Okay, um, 13 is petitions and statements. Again, we haven't received any. Okay, if we move on to 14 then, which are the minutes of the Transport Committee held on the 31st of January 2019. And these are uh, minutes to be confirmed. Can we confirm those, please? The next meeting of the Command Authority will take place on Friday the 12th of April 2019 at 1 o'clock. Can I declare the meeting closed? Thank you for your attendance.